Hello everyone. Welcome to this video Alter's hands on questions. In today's video we will see how to convert SQL queries into Alteryx. If you like the video please subscribe to the channel and do check out the description box for other useful videos. So let's get started. Here are the list of tools which we, we would be using for today. Okay. For using the select in SQL, we'll use the input data tool, for group by summarize tool, order by short tool, join. For that, we'll use the join and join multiple. For where, we will use the filter tool. To select the selected columns, we'll use the select tool. For distinct, we'll use unique. Isnal function, we'll have the isnal function. For like and case sensitive, we'll use the start with function in Alteryx. For case statements in SQL, we'll use the formula and if conditions. For union, we'll use the union and the formula tool. So, first of all, what we are going to check it with uh, SSMS. So, I'll give the link in the description box to download the SQL Server, the SQL Server Management Studio that is SSMS. And finally, how to restore the Adventure Works database for us. Once you have gone through that, we can come to Alteryx. First, you have to set up a connection. For that, you can use the input data. Set up a connection. Go to Data Source. In Microsoft SQL Server, click on Quick Connect. You will uh, give a name for this. Like, Let me give a name, Test. In host, I'll select local host. Then I'll do a test. Test was successful. So now I get all the databases. I'll select Adventure Works 2019 and click on OK. So since I already have SSMS connection, I'll use that. So for you to configure, you can use this method. Uh, before proceeding, I would like to tell you about this website which has the structure of all the adventure works data model okay so we are working with a human resource here if you see here there is a table called human resource employee the employee is connected to multiple other tables so let's just check out what are the tables we will be using in this video Uh, the yellow highlighted ones are the ones we are going to use along the red one. So the ones which are highlighted in yellow, they are uh, having the join based on single entity which is called business entity ID, which you can check here. Okay. So this employee and job detail, if you click on this, hover over this, you can see the business entity ID is the joining condition or common column for both of it. So for all the yellow ones, we have business entity ID as a column and for the red one, we have department ID. So to approach this in all tricks, the method which we will be using is for all the yellow ones which are having the common column, we'll use a join multiple and for the other one, we will use a join. Now let's move on to all tricks to see our first question. Our first question is to display the department wise employees in which we will be using the select group by order join and a chart as well. So first let's see how to get that in SQL. Here is my SQL code. I'll select the name and the count of the login IDs from the employee table. I'll join it with the employee department history table on the business entity IDs. Then I'll join it with the department ID of the department table to get the name because if you see the data model here, this table and this table are joined with business entity ID which has a department ID and then to get the name of the department, we need to join it further with the department table. We'll group it by name and we'll order it by two which is the count of login IDs and it's an ascending order. So let's see how to do it in Alteryx. 
First, the yellow tables which I mentioned, which is employee, employee department history, job candidate, employee payment history, and the person. These are all things we will pass it through a joint multiple tool. In this, there are five right so all the five we will have to select which column we are using for join so we'll select the business entity id here our department as we have seen in the model has a separate join condition right which is department id so whatever input output we are getting from this join will pass that to a normal join tool along with the department okay and these two will join it based on the department ids to get the final one to get the count right we'll use a summarize tool to get the count and to group it by so we'll count the distinct login ids and we'll group it by name which is the department name here the other tool which we are using is the sort tool where we are just sorting based on ascending order because in our sql we are doing it order by two which is count of login id ascending and finally we are using a line a line and bar graph to show it so this is our output we see executive is two tool design is four let's check it in our sql okay executive is two tool design is four production has the highest count which is 180 so for production we see it was 180 okay so this was our first question moving on to the next question we'll display the employees whose middle name start with A or null. In this, we are going to use the where clause. The, we are going to use selected statement, selected columns, distinct is null function and the like operator. Let's see the SQL query for this. We will select the distinct first name, middle name, last name from the person table. Join it with the human resource employee table on the business entity IDs where the middle name is null or the upper of middle name like starting with a order by first name so for this join condition if you see this person and this right they are joined by the business entity id these are two tables we are using here moving on to alteryx we'll take in the output which we got from our resultant join condition in the previous question we'll pass it to a filter tool for the where clause where we will use a function called that starts with which accepts the string which we are going to enter which is the middle name we want to locate a here as the beginning character and one means case insensitive in sql to make it case insensitive we are using the upper with the middle and then writing after like we are using the capital a this will make it case insensitive we are using all condition and is null function and passing the middle name to it to see whether it is null or not next tool is a select tool where we are selecting the first name middle name and last name because these are the only columns we need we don't need the other ones we are sorting it based on the first name to get the unique which is a distinct one okay where we have used distinct we are using a unique tool and we want a unique first name middle name and last name So if you see the first one is A Scott, middle name is null and it is right. Next is Betsy A Standwick. Standwick. Let's see our output here. Okay, so we got the same output in our SQL also. Moving on to the next question. Here we'll convert the gender M to male and F to female. Let's see our SQL query for it. For this, we'll select the distinct gender case when we are using case when statements. When gender is M, then make it male. When gender is F, then make it female, else it is incorrect. And end is as a new column gender new. This is from the employee table, and this is how our output looks like. To replicate this here, we'll again use the output which we got from a joint statement. Here, we are going to use the formula tool. We will create a new column here. So here we have multiple options, either to append, uh, I mean, the update the existing column or to add a new column. So we will use a new column, gender new. If gender is M, we don't. We will be using if statements here, then male. Else if gender is equal to F, then female. 
else incorrect and then end if to get the distinct value here we will be using the summarized look okay? we can just group by the gender new and the gender to get the two columns which we have an output here if i show you the output we are getting f for female and m for male the exactly the one which we have in a sql moving on to the next question uh, we will use an union here where we, we have to union the modified date from the person table and the higher date from the employee table Since there are many records, I'll just show you an example of how this union works So in this workflow, I have taken a sample text input where we have had the values 1 to 5 and another I have 3 and 4 I pass it to an union tool and if I want to see the result here this is how the result looks like okay the first one was s which is 1 to 5 and the next is 3 and 4 to combine them into together we will have to use a formula tool so i'm using a formula tool and i'm creating a new column called as new so if is null of s then display the value of t which is from the second data set else display from the first data set and if and let's see how the output looks like so if you see one has 1 2 5 3 4 all the values are done and union okay from the data set the same logic we'll use in our sql workflow so the modified date so we we'll have to take the person table and the employee table so here if i have joined the person's table okay this is the person's table and the first one is the employee table i have passed both of them to an union I've used the select tool to select only the modified date and higher date and similarly as we had a formula tool there right I am creating a column new column called as union column and if is null of higher date then display the modified date else the higher date and here is how we get our output okay so wherever this is null higher date is null we get the modified date otherwise we'll get the mod uh, I think vice versa if higher date is null then the modified date otherwise the higher date okay thank you so much for watching please subscribe to the channel and share it with your friends if you find it useful